One. Welcome to the Golf Podcast Live. I'm your host, Raphael Calamat, alongside Michael Bleakley, as always, brought to you by ECS, Evolve Creative Solutions. Lots to talk about today, LPGA, PGA, and women's golf. But before we get started, we have a very special guest. Her name is Alyssa Gaudet, and she is the founder of Women's Golf Day, also Executive Golf International President. Alyssa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Raphael, Michael. So nice to spend some time with you today. Yes, thank you for coming. Uh, it's really great to have you on. We've got a, a mutual friend, Lisa Vluswick, who's Canadian Long Drive Champion, and she put us in touch with you, and we're really thrilled to have you on. After researching all the stuff that you do, unbelievable schedule. It's really great to meet mm -hmm. you. We'd like our audience to get to know our guests a little bit before we get started. So maybe you could tell us how you got involved with golf and what you're doing today. Sure. Um, so I started back in around 1999. Um, I was living in Miami and I was working for a um, MGM Latin America. I met some people uh, and just ended up uh, getting a job and working with the Toda Las Americas. So it's a Latin golf tour um, and worked for them for a while. And in 2000, when I was in Argentina, if the golf fanatics out there remember, that's a year that... Tiger Woods during you know Tiger Woods and David Duval ended up going neck and neck on Sunday with Cabrera and Romero, mm -hmm. so it was a World Cup event. Um, it always happens at the end of the year, and I met some people from the PGA Tour and we stayed in touch. And then they had me come in, and I ended up working for the PGA Tour and running that exact same event two years later in Mexico. Oh, so I ran the 2002 EMC World Cup lived in Mexico for 14 months. So it was an incredible, I always tell everybody that was my MBA. Wow. <laughs> like I, I was thinking about doing an MBA before, but that was it uh, for sure. As far as the golf business and everything, as I say, from sponsorships to tablecloths to everything, it's uh, really, I have so much respect for anybody who puts on these major events. I don't think a lot of people realize what goes into it, but mm. um, incredible experience. And then from there, I started my own, a strategic marketing and branding company, uh, which is still goes on to this day. And in between, I've done a couple little projects, always in golf. I've been on the business side of golf. I always tell people that like, if I had to rely on my golfing skills, I'd be living under a bridge with a piece of cardboard. <laughs> so I do play <laughs> golf, but I'm not great. I'm much better at the business side, thankfully. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so from there, and then I stopped uh, doing a little bit of, you know, the consulting and did, uh, wrote some books. I did three in a row, a series called Two Good Rounds, which is pretty awesome. And I get to see each time I feel blessed that I've been able to touch a different part of the industry and, and really go into a, a little bit of a different direction. And then from there, um, got back into the consulting. And then one of the projects was this Women's Golf Day, which started as a little side project in 2016. And now it's more than full time. So uh, we're going on cool. seventh year. So yeah, it's a you know women's platform one day around the world event that Lisa Longball is our ambassador for Canada. And um, yeah, this past year, Despite COVID, we had 880 locations in wow. 68 countries all on the same day. Did you say 880? 880? Locations, wow. yeah, Jeez. in 68 countries. So <laughs> that's, you know, um, it's like, you know, they all sign up, the locations do with us, and it's a great uh, feeder program to get new women. We have a hashtag, bring a friend. So it's a, a four-hour format. The first two hours, women either play nine holes, ideally in a scramble, the ones that know how to play and the ones that don't know how to play, take lessons. So an hour on the driving range, an hour chipping and putting. Then after two hours, everybody stops and it's two hours of socializing. And so that's Perfect. an opportunity for the club. You can bring in a speaker, they can do a charity. We don't require them to do that. Um, but you can see where it's based on all the data that we saw that women were quick to try golf, but quick to leave and they didn't feel comfortable. So. We took all those points, made it short format, super fun, very relaxed. You know, if all of us were um, going to take tennis lessons and you know, we didn't know each other or anything, no one's saying like, let's go to Wimbledon. So having new people with existing golfers, rarely do you ever see that in any mm -hmm. format or any sport. 
And then when they get to the social part, you know, someone says, hey, just come with me and sit in the cart. Or, you know, you haven't played in a while, why don't you just sub in our, you know, league play and get back into it a little, no, you know, no commitment. And a lot of different ways that, you know, just the ways that women are a little bit different than men, that how they engage and, and interact. So, yeah, it's been successful, a lot of work, fun, and we are looking to increase this year, especially in Canada and some other places, but Canada, Japan. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, I mean, it's a rare thing to take your passion and create a career and an income uh, and, and live by that. And uh, my great grandfather worked at St. Andrews in the day and moved to Ontario, where he and uh, his business partner started uh, promoting women's golf in the uh, sort of early mid 1900s. Uh, their tournament still runs to this day. It's called the Hunter Armitage Trophy. So it's it's kind of been in my blood. Uh, wow. to promote the game uh, to to women and uh, so you know having lisa on the show was fantastic and and her introducing us to you is great to get some insight uh, on uh, on how you're been able to promote the game uh, to women and i i like the format that what you're doing it sounds like it's fun it's inclusive uh, for any skill level of golfer uh, to, to get involved and try it for the first time or experience the course but um maybe run us through the, you know, the early conceptual dates. So, so uh, where you got involved with this and, and, uh, and how you were able to grow it to, to 880 locations like that, that is amazing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, because we had talked, I'd been in the golf industry since, you know, effectively 2000, you know, a lot of conferences, a lot of um, people saying, you know, we want to get more women, especially when it was a down market. And mm -hmm. you got to think that it's not just women, Women, you know, what we're trying to do is have them also see women as economic influencers. So mm -hmm. even if a woman doesn't necessarily become some avid league player, if she decides to have her daughter's wedding or the company Christmas party or something at your country club, I can promise you that your country club will make more money than if the woman golfed once a week, every week, yeah. all year round. So, I mean, I think it's that type of thing, too, and understanding, you know, not shaming people just having them you know play golf what they want if it's four times a year and it's global at night or it's what nine and one i mean i think top golf proved that to us yeah so just accept them how they are and let them and engage them and then also obviously for juniors and and things like that so it was a mix of this and then a lot of studies i had read and then we took this concept and we beta tested it we spoke with you know, very big retailer in America. So PJ Tour Superstore, you know, the head of marketing and as well from a lot of like Troons and Club Corp, a lot of multi-course owners yep. come up with a day and a date because Monday, a lot of clubs have um, charity events. So you'd be taking revenue away from the club. Obviously, we don't want to go up against, even though we're not going up against, but, you know, any type of competitive play on all the tours or Friday, Thursday through Sunday, most clubs, especially when we were starting out, are not going to give us the course or half the course or any of the course on a Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we landed on Tuesday, and then they said do it in the beginning of the year. When you know, of course, we were, the, we were never thinking it would be as large as it was when we were first doing it. So um, do it in June because it's a you know start of the golf season at least in America and Canada, mm -hmm. and, you know, North America for the most part in Europe. Um, and that's that's really how we got first Tuesday in June. So the date changes every year, but it is the first Tuesday in June. It's it is a developmental program. I think the main thing is we don't step on toes. We're not like golf the women's golf day way. We're driving business it's like a giant feeder program right. to all the pros out there that at the time, remember, we're during 2015, 2016, as this is developing. The first year was 2016. You know, pros were looking for a business. I mean, maybe now with COVID, it's not this as um scarce as it was back in those days you know there's a lot of people wanting to play golf but there's a lot of pros that were looking you know how and this is a great way you know to yeah. get them in or for a club to also like i said to generate revenue they're all I mean, we're businesses we're all businesses at yeah. the end of the day we love to golf and we you know it's a recreational sport for many but it is a business for us so i think there's nothing wrong with that I and i think looking at ways that help that is a positive thing I totally agree with you. Alyssa, it's fascinating because back in 2000, 1999, 2000, that's when I started becoming a coach and an instructor, worked at a 
a number of golf clubs and i found that women weren't playing the game all that often and we started up a monday and a wednesday league one was for instruction one was to get the women out on the golf course then i had other women approach me about smaller groups that they could get together and that was sort of the the beginning of it i because now it's grown considerably and because of people like you uh, the game for women and for girls is growing exponentially so we thank you for that the women's golf day so there is a membership that's involved there's a vip membership that you offer as well as um, you had the uh, you mentioned a partnership with the pga superstore and there's travel involved as well i've seen some pretty nice locations uh paris uh is it is it morocco or monaco that i saw morocco oh, morocco oh, very <laughs> just cool. really exotic great places to go out and play so tell us about the the program the membership and the different ways people can get involved yeah so first of all just for the actual event on the this year june 7th you know the location registers with us and then women go to our website we encourage them to go you know maybe after the first or second week of may so everything's uploaded we're like at the end now of getting um, a lot of locations up but they can find a place where they can participate anywhere in the world, you know, and that was the idea that there's a resource. And on that, we also created resources. So from that, we kept trying to like, you know, how are we engaging the rest of the year or trying to really listen to what women want, you know, what people are saying and feedback we're getting. So we created a VIP membership and, you know, we tried to make it something more than a magazine subscription and 10% off at a rent a car. Right. So, <laughs> you know, really wanted it. So, you know, like with our partners and we, we actively work with, we have amazing partners that are truly committed to growing. So it's Callaway, Titleist, Flip Joy, PG Tour Superstore. You know, and as I say that, you know, Callaway created clubs, Reva this past year, they launched 2021 that were, you know, they did R&D, spent the time, the money to create something that is specifically designed for women. Mm -hmm. And then, so, so one of the things like PJ Tour Superstore with that VIP, and it's just extra things for women that we can offer. So it'd be, you know, your club fitting or going into a store and um, having time in a hitting bay, uh, you know, a, 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 maybe a half hour lesson, but there are things that hopefully will get them to the next step, the next level, keep them engaged. And like I said, the, our main thing too, and you'll see as we build it out, our resource page is how can we then direct them to keep going or get the other programs? We don't want to create a shoe. We got enough on our plate, but to like, you know, how there's a lot of great programs out there and whether it's, you just want to take lessons and get a little bit better, or you want to go because all the top golf locations participate, all the PGA Tour Superstores and courses. And I only say that because we found one of the major things is women are intimidated. So even if you can't find a friend, either a bring a friend or hopefully a friend that does golf. We all know we all have a friend that doesn't golf that we wish that they did. So that's the first. Then the second level is two friends that maybe would love to try it because women we kind of move in packs. So mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we're hoping that either those women or as well a woman who's by herself and is just interested on that Tuesday. I feel like there's three tiers. I always say you can walk into a PGA Tour superstore. It's free and if you don't like it, you walk out. You don't have to worry about what to wear, who's going to be right. there, am I going to fit into a, to a golf course? You know, because that's a, very intimidating. And well, that's mm -hmm. another one thing we heard. I, I've always wondered why I got so many emails from my ladies uh, group. I, they would ask me everything from clubs to clothing to so many details. And I, I understood that it was really important in the social aspect and, and feeling comfortable in that environment. And so if you don't provide those tools and resources, uh, it won't attract them as much. Absolutely. So we feel like there's that. So then there's another, which is Top Golf. Also, you could just walk, sign up, go in, see what it's about, a lot less pressure. And then there's golf courses, you know, which a lot of them, even private clubs open the, that up for that day. You know, X number of people can register or what have mm -hmm. you. Hopefully a friend will bring you there. But, you know, I think we have enough of a breath that there's no barrier to entry. So there's no cost. There's, you know, each one of these offers something that I think would hopefully attract. And then I do feel like it's, you know, we're bringing the horse to water. It's up to you guys to make a drink. I mean, you guys, not <laughs> the golf industry. Yeah. Because 
you know, we're not, we're not going to go create a program. That's it. Like, okay, now, you know, the local pro will say, I've got this, or you're at David Ledbetter or whomever, you know, something more structured, something a little loosey goosey, or you go take lessons at Top Golf or at PGA Tour Superstore so you feel comfortable and do it at the level that you want. So that that's our idea. And just work with all the governing bodies and everybody around to just make sure that we can pass these women off and that people are understanding the benefit of it. Yeah. Oh, it's very cool. And you make some good points uh, earlier about uh, revenue in the golf course, and it may not necessarily be in terms of green fees and whatnot, but the events at a golf course and, and most golf courses break even on, uh, on the golf itself, they make their profits from the weddings, the banquets, the corporate functions and whatnot. So uh, by bringing in a new demographic to a club, uh, it, it could uh, be a boon to revenue uh, uh, off the course. But um, in the, the courses, uh, they, 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 it's a good way to make things fun, give them uh, some time on the range, a short game clinic, and then get them into the club. Because uh, the clubhouse itself is, is a big part of golf. And, uh, and part of that experience, especially for a, a new golfer, uh, just to go and hang out in a beautiful environment and uh, have a couple of drinks or a bite to eat after experiencing golf, I think will go a long way into uh, the satisfaction um, uh, of women and new golfers coming to, to, a, uh, to a club. And like Top Golf has proven that, as you said, you can go share a pitcher with your friends, you know, try and smash a few balls out into the range and get an experience with golf. And uh, so, um, so I, I love hearing the, uh, the the corporate relationships that you've developed with uh, with Women's Golf Day, and and, uh, and keep it up. So, my question from here is, what's in the future? Where, uh, what other uh, exciting things are you adding to uh, your repertoire? We're 45 days away. I'm just trying to like, you know, hang on, <laughs> hang on to the safety yeah, yeah. bar. <laughs> um, we work, you know, we're very super lucky. The RNA has been a huge supporter since we pretty much almost since inception. Yeah. So with a lot of these groups, we've gotten really good about, um, we take that partner th partnership seriously. So there's markets that we want to, I'm just talking about a global, and we, I talked about it. So it's, you know, Canada and, um, in Japan, you know, we've kind of felt like we've had a giant pause for the last two years mm -hmm. with COVID. So we weren't exactly pushing um, go meet in groups if a government or a country is, you know, not doing that. So I think like we're back to now a little bit more how 2019 was. So we're going to, yeah. you know, do do the best we can uh, our focus came back a little bit again to North America just because it is the largest um golfing community uh and so we will continue to do that as you started to mention we have we started these trips because we felt like some women you know there's places that maybe they think oh i have to go with a man or it might be scared you know we didn't want them to feel that way these are all places that i've traveled extensively lived as well we partnered with uh women's golf and travel which that's all they've been doing for years is women's golf trips so we picked a few spots. I don't know if it's also still because now there's a war going on in Europe. <laughs> right. Europe and so, you know, we'll probably next year, you'll definitely see a U.S. and a, Can a Canada one um, on there. But we did, you know, we were thinking that, like, I've heard a lot of people like, oh, I'd love to go to Morocco or, mm -hmm. you know, you shouldn't have to wait. Mm -hmm. And it, it, You know, we, we have this is so well done and safe and, um, you know, it's 25 women. It's not a huge group, but it's also like, you know, not just you and three other women that so yeah it's a really fabulous experience uh yeah wgd travel it's on our website i hope uh, we get more women to sign up and go and um like i said we've got 25 spots for each i know that the paris one's already filling up so amazing That's amazing fun. sounds like you need a couple spots for uh, your podcast hosts <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Are you, are you going to take the show on the road? I think you should just, yeah. you know, it's it's in the works. We absolutely, it's in the plans. Show on the road. I got two spots for you. Finca <laughs> Cortesine in Spain yeah. for the Solheim Cup. And then I think you just stay over there and just go to the Ryder Cup. But two weeks later in Rome. Yeah, there we go. That sounds, sounds, sounds like a plan. Yeah, sounds I like an epic I'm trip. I'm not kidding, guys. I'm completely serious. I think you should look into that. All right. All right. They're we'll like two weeks apart. It. Two weeks Definitely. apart. No, we will. 
Well, Alyssa, something off topic now, something we do on the show, we talk about unique golf stories. And I, I'm reminded that I was out in Dubai and being out at the Emirates Golf Club and remembering seeing sand blowers on the golf course, which was unique to me. And then somebody coming to visit me every four holes, giving me a cold towel and some water so I stay hydrated. You, in fact, have a very unique golf story I read about that you played golf underwater. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did this. It was actually Abaco. I went on a, like a fam trip at oh. the time that I was writing a lot. And yeah, I had this idea. Um, and I hadn't seen anybody do it. And I even remember at the time, I like, you know, wasn't I'm not big on me personally, big on social media. Uh, but I was like, you know, Greg Norman and Tiger are both divers, but I've never seen them. So yeah, I took a golf ball and a golf club underwater and, uh, Knocked it around a bit. That's great. <laughs> I imagine it's what it's like on the moon a little bit. You know right, I mean? right. Because it was yeah. that kind of buoyancy and funkiness and like trying to do it. And and then so, I had, you know, obviously a dive ma master that was with me who probably thought I was totally nuts. Um, so there's Neil Armstrong on one end. There's Neil Armstrong and then there's Alyssa Godet, right? We've had that, yeah, that, I, think, I think Neil wins. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, it was, it was like, it was a fun little, like, you know, one of these ideas you just come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, you guys, you know, we're all journal. I mean, I'm a journalist too. Right. So that's my degree. And you're always looking for some, like some interesting angle. So, mm -hmm. you know, and it's kind of like, I enjoy, yeah, I was, I'm dive certified. I enjoy it. Like no better place than somewhere like, you know, Abacoa or beautiful, clear water. That's, yeah. That sounds wonderful. Hey, you talk about writing, but run us through your books. Uh, two Good Rounds. It's a series that you've written. Um, I find it fascinating. Just discovered it. I'd love to uh, get my hands on one of those copies, as well as you have a, a blog or a column that you've been doing for quite some time. Yeah, that kind of stopped, though, with Women's Golf Day. I think around 20, the blog did. or the. Uh -huh. it, it's actually a syndicated article. There's a couple publications that picked it up, but I just didn't even have the time. Um, so the two good rounds is a play on like a round of golf and a round of drinks. So that's the two good rounds. I mean, the only other thing I know is boxing. So um, the idea was, you know, nothing salacious, very formulaic, but I think we all can identify with them or how good or bad a golfer you are. You know, the 19th hole or, or that part about golf that is the camaraderie, the friendship. So this was the idea that it was just stories, um, that you know people had about golf and golf rounds and something you maybe would talk about after a round at the bar or at you know sitting at a table having a, a meal or something so the first one is um two good rounds 19th whole stories from the world's greatest golfers so it's 36 the top golfers in the world male and female Dak, mm -hmm. arnold gary you know the keegan and matt kuchar and nancy lopez so it's, it runs the gamut but everybody gets asked the same question, which is interesting. You know, their favorite 19th hole, 19th hole story, if they ever got a hole in one, things like that. Um, yeah. The second book is 54 of the top athletes in the world that play golf and are pretty good. Almost everybody that I interviewed, I think, was a single digit handicap. And I have mm -hmm. Olympians. And so the only thing I have in there now that's kind of funny is I have Bruce Jenner, who no longer really exists in that form. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, it, that's the same thing, men and women and from all over the world. It's not just, you know, American sports. So um, but we do have, I think it's uh, Michael Strahan, a football player, Giants, mm -hmm. um, Wayne Gretzky, hockey player, of course you guys would know, and um, and Michael Phelps on the cover. So, Very cool. Yeah, and then the third one was 33 CEOs. It's called Two Good Rounds Titans. Mm -hmm. leaders in industry and golf and it's 33 ceos that own their own golf course they had to own it outright not a membership so like herb kohler and mike kessler who owns bandon dunes and that's interesting too you know what they did to create the wealth to build a golf course some of them are more like a monument you know like liberty national and yeah. things like that then you know gonna probably turn a profit anytime soon but <laughs> Pretty amazing stories and places. And I think it also has like, um, I think it's nine golfers who transcended golf and really um, got into business. Mm -hmm. So it's 
you know, Tiger and Greg Norman and Ernie Els, they have wine brands or built, you know, Annika as well, golf courses and, you know, other things that they have done that they kind of created a business empire in addition to their golfing career. Wow. It sounds uh, like three good reads. Yeah. Where, where can we find these books right now? Um, I believe on Amazon. Amazon, where we buy everything else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> call Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Amazon, He's like his clip. Amazon or Google, yeah, I think um, okay. is the best spot these days. Okay, no, fantastic. We will definitely check that out. And uh, what about your own interactions with these? Uh, any standout stories with Gary or Jack or you know Greg? Norman, I mean, he's been making a lot of news lately. Uh, anything you can share with our viewers or listeners that uh, might make them laugh? It sounds like they're all Palm Beach residents. Uh, isn't Greg out there as well now? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's right <laughs> up the road from me, actually. Um, <laughs> um, I have, you know, I've been really lucky to to do to meet some of them. I think one of the like little highs I had was having cocktails with Arnold Palmer after an event in the Met Golf Writers, you know, just sitting at the bar and I was like, okay, that's too cool. You yeah, know, yes, like some type of um, rat pack kind of moment. Yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, some of, I've known some of these guys, you know, when I worked to the tour, so it's been a while. I like, as you, you noted, I did a, a column. So like, you know, been inside Justin Rose when he was building his house and you know, kind of cool things. Annika um, and her husband, Mike McGee, couldn't be nicer, you know, mm -hmm. seeing them down in Argentina when she was doing her foundation and been to events and things. And just, you know, you kind of see, you know, at the end of the day too, we are, you know, somewhat of a small industry, I guess, or, you know, you're in there long enough, you um, are around different people and different places and, you know, Anytime you get to go to the Masters, and I was blessed. That's probably, that would be a good one, is that I did dance flamenco in the parking lot with Sevi Ballesteros, and he's the first. <laughs> wow. Well, there's a great story. You now can't we're talking. Leave, you can't leave that out. <laughs> and he is the person that gave me a badge to go to Augusta. He couldn't go because his back, had these back problems, you know, prior to us all knowing that he actually had, you know, some brain issues. Mm. But, um yeah, it was a year that he was here doing a bunch of events, Gary Players event that he you know, has a uh, fundraiser. And um, so, yeah, the great, I just have, I mean, I'm Italian, but I happen to speak Spanish because I lived in Spain right out of college. So okay. he is somebody who spoke Spanish and that's, you know, started helping him, taking him around. So. You know, it's, it's great for our listeners to even hear the small stories, because I think um, when you're in the environment of the golf world, so you're, you're kind of circulating around those people, isn't a big deal most of the time. Uh, sometimes it's very cool to meet somebody, but it's sort of around you. But when people hear about these things, they, they love to, to, to get these nuggets of, of great stories. I, I think... Over the course of the last few months, we've experienced some really great stories, Mike, with uh, with our guests, and it, it amazes me Absolutely. that Arnold Palmer comes up over and over again about how people remember their moments, not even real conversation or experience, their Arnold Palmer moments, because he was such a gentleman. He kind of welcomed everybody he met, and so we're, we're getting a lot more of that than we ever thought. Um, recently, uh, people are talking a little bit about more, more about Tiger. He seems to be a little bit more vocal in what he's doing. He's more of a family person, and he's more interactive with the media, which is really nice to see. Uh, but if we circle back to women's golf, something unique is happening in the world of golf for women. Uh, you've got the U.S. Women's Open now have a $10 million purse. It's not only the highest purse for women's golf it's the highest purse for women's sport and it's it's wonderful to see the golf channel nbc and cbs and other networks like espn espn plus covering women's golf this week the women are in la uh, they're playing the la open uh, brooke henderson our fellow canadian girl is doing really well she's got 10 wins under her belt um, your thoughts on how women's golf has grown since you got into the sport and where it is today. Yeah, it's always great to um, 
to see that happen, to see their, you know, either create or look to an increased interest uh, with professional sports. Um, and I just always like to say we're super supportive of LPGA and all the tours. But I, you know, I don't feel like it's just like you're a man, so you watch PGA Tour, and you're a woman, so you watch LPGA. There's a lot of women that want to watch Tiger and, yeah. you know, everybody else. So um, I think it's great if the more that obviously that they're, you know, can get to equal pay and and things like that. So um, you know, I welcome, you know, with ours. Remember, we're we're dealing with amateurs, so we want them to to consume as much golf as they want or they have an appetite for. So it's always, like I said, it's good to see that. And I think, you know, I do celebrate it, but I celebrate a lot more. And I think we personally look for stories and highlight them on our social media. It's more the least mm -hmm. long balls of the world. And there's some pretty amazing, we have a woman who's a teach. well, I know three. So I can think of like that. So um, there's a woman in the UK that, bought her own golf course with her own money, you know, by herself, wow. <laughs> did it, everything like that. Um, and Kathy Harbin, who's in the industry, she worked for Club Corp for years, it was always her dream. Same thing, her own money, saved it, bought a golf course in Paris, Texas. Huh. And, uh, you know, golf course architects, Jan Baljan, um, the Ryder Cup, a lot of people don't realize is owned by a woman. Wow. The venue, Marco Simone is owned by Letizia, I'm going to butcher the name, but the, um, it's a big fashion brand, Laura, should know this off the top of my head, was a mother, and they bought the property years ago, and they have a house there, it's actually a castle that you can see from the golf course, you know, and it was her idea, her mother passed, it was her idea to host the Ryder Cup, so mm -hmm. I mean, those are the kind of stories that I think, you know, hey guys, <laughs> Ryder Cup, you're going in Italy. Do you know it's owned by a woman? It was her idea to host it in Italy. So, and you know, the places like that, those are countries, whether it's France or Italy or Spain, each of those countries have maybe 350 to, to 420 golf courses uh, in the entire country. Yeah. So it's a big deal. Yeah, it's a lot more exclusive when you're out in Europe. There's something to be said about it being still a very elitist game. And so growing, growing it the way you have uh, certainly helps expose people to the game and, and gets them to, to even try it out. Even in Eastern European bloc countries, you know, you're looking at the Czech Republic now, Latvia and Poland, the, the growth of the game is, uh, is getting so big. And, and so that's really nice to see. And you can start seeing that in the smaller tours um, out in Europe. Um, so th that's really good to see. You know, out, out here in Canada, we've got more golf courses uh, courses per capita than anywhere else in the world, except I think Japan now just surpassed us. You know, we got Canada only having 35 million people. We've got 2,200 golf courses. Uh, Florida, on the other hand, has a, a <laughs> lot of golf courses. You're sort of in that hub of golf. Um, yeah. I want to ask you a question about your, your background, Godet. Like, th there is a Canadian connection, isn't there? We talked before the yes. podcast. What is that Canadian yeah. connection? So, yeah, my father, my father's side of the family is French-Canadian. So, yeah, the name Alyssa Godet is pretty Frenchy. Uh, um, uh, uh, Francais un petit peu, un petit peu encore? Un petit peu, un petit okay, peu. Okay. <laughs> that's that's um, what all I can speak to. So, And I, I, I was born in Montreal, so <laughs> don't feel bad. <laughs> Yeah, no, I spent some time even last summer uh, for a few months in Paris because we're trying to grow that, that Europe market. But I try. I mean, I, I do. I love it. And um, I'm a huge fan of Canada, obviously, because of my family and everything. Um, my grandparents lived there and came over. So and they did speak French just, you know, in their house. But it was more so that we wouldn't understand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, it wasn't like to teach us, unfortunately. But um yeah, I'm super proud of that. And uh, yeah, I always joke, I'm half French, half Italian. It's like a, a dormant volcano. Yeah. Know, like, <laughs> mostly calm, but when what's, it goes, you better get out of the way. What's, <laughs> what's the term uh, teenagers are using these days? My son always says, that's spicy. You know, when something Toxic. is different, yeah, it's spicy, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe, I don't know. 
Um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about Executive Golf International, like uh, how uh, that business got started, what type of clients you're working on, and uh, where where it's going in the future. Yeah, so that was started after I finished working for the tour. I just saw yeah. a need that um, a lot of the sponsors and the people that were getting involved didn't know how to navigate. Most sports are TV rights and merchandising, pretty much. So, you're, you know, mm-hmm. with majors, you know, NFL, MLB. NHL um, golf is very different because just the way people engage from a sponsorship perspective. So mm-hmm. if you're buying hospitality or so much more to it. Um, and as well, the industry itself, you know, people aren't buying houses next to a, a football stadium. So yes. you know, whether it's, you know, golf course communities or vacations or any of those type of things, um, it's a very different and it's a little more difficult to navigate. So that was the idea to, that okay. I started the consulting. And, you know, I've had the government, the Dominican Republic, um, lots of different clients along the way from t- 2003 uh, until probably 2017 or 18 when women's golf games started to get too much and, and uh, or really right around COVID time. So the last one was Waterville Golf Links in Ireland was a client that I was working with which is a phenomenal mm-hmm. course and 18th mm-hmm. century manor house and things like that. So it's really just helping people target creating, you know, we have this strategy synergy activation. Um, and that's sort of very targeted and specific and, you know, really helping move the needle to have a, a brand message and derive whatever it is. So Dominican Republic is looking to drive tourism. It's a huge revenue and real estate and things like that. Um, whereas, you know, Waterville was going through a, a very uh, expansive clubhouse redo. And, you know, when you're investing that type of money, you want to make sure that you're, you know, everything's together and that they're going to uh, get the benefits of not just that, but you know, letting people know who they are, where they are. And it could be memberships or tourism or what have you. So it's, yeah. it, you know, it's fun, but, uh, you know, I've kind of stopped doing that. Uh, I mean, women's golf day is kind of, is under that. It's a prime example of, strategy synergy and activation yeah. but we've gotten pretty big now and we have you're mentioning the czech republic is huge with women's golf day as well as um poland so we have i think like 40 ambassadors now from all over the world wow wow yeah so That's it's incredible. interesting you no know, Alyssa, it's it's really unique golf like you mentioned is unlike nhl nba activating clients to participate because you have accommodations you have real estate you have food and beverage, massive part of the industry, um, be it you know what type of food or wine. And, that, and that's why I feel that a lot of these professional golfers have gone into those areas where it's golf course design, real estate development, uh, wine, uh, clothing brands, you're going into merchandising side of things. So it's, you know, golf is fascinating for all those reasons. And I feel that when people come into the industry or try out golf, they realize, well, there's a whole world here. I don't necessarily have to play golf all the time. I could just have the social aspect of it and be in the golf environment because it's it's fun, it's unique. Uh, you get to travel. You go to some some of the nicest venues in the world are at golf resorts and golf locations, and so uh, that that experience in itself is is fascinating. Uh, what is one of your favorite international golf destinations that you've gone to? Oh my gosh. Wow. That's a tough one. So I've been to some that are just for the reasons that they hosted amazing, you know, like Le National in Paris, yeah, that hosted a Ryder Cup. And even mm. inside there is very, their clubhouse is, you know, like over the top. Really? No, just like, what side are you on? It's got all the Ryder Cups, got signed, oh, testimonials. Oh, cool. You know, it's, it's really like takes you to the moment. Um, and I've been to like, you know, places in Italy, like, uh, you know, random places that for, yeah, I just loved it. It was like, uh, Terme de Saturnia. Saturnia is the town, it's a golf course there. Mm-hmm. And they have this amazing thermal pool that the Romans used to come and go and after coming from battle, stop there and then go. And they've turned this into this, you know, hotel and, and golf course. Um, Morocco, which is why we have a trip there. I mean, I love Morocco. Oh. And they host one of, I think there's one other place 
that maybe on the European tour stop or what have you, but they have the Hassan De as well as the Lala Miriam. So it's the European men's tour and the European ladies tour competing on the exact same week on adjoining courses. So wow. that's really a cool, neat, talk about oh. a great event to go to as well. I, I love Marrakesh. I'm just like in love with the energy and everything it's safe it's beautiful it's exotic the yeah, courses they, are... yeah it's very exotic it, it always seems that way you know in morocco it's uh everything from the food to the culture the people and uh, the fashion it's it's pretty interesting i've never been myself but uh, certainly on a bucket list but you're you're in florida there's so much great golf you don't even need to leave the state of florida yes, be it the, be it the weather or a resort where you could go to doral you could go to tpc sawgrass I mean, I could just go on for about 10 minutes. Some of your favorite spots, maybe in Florida, you know, it's always best heard from somebody who lives in Florida. You know, Mike and I are planning to retire there one day. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I'm a, you know, because I work in the industry, I'm like the typical OPC, you know, other people's club. So I feel like there's yeah. always something going on, event. My personal favorite is this Palm Beach par three. So it's on the island of Palm Beach. It is a par three, but it's along the ocean. Yeah. And you know what? Golf is your short game. I don't care what anybody says. You can 100%. drive all day long. But yeah. so that's what this is. So if you're a guy and you're gonna be like, oh, it's a par three, okay, I'll take let's do it. You know? Yeah. Let's go. Check it out. That's my personal favorite here. That's out um, by uh, Juno <laughs> Beach, right? Not too far from there. It's no, it's like, right on the island of Palm Beach. On the island of Palm Beach. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the island of Palm Beach. It's called Palm Beach Par Three. It's a Raymond Floyd oh, yes. uh, track. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and he does. He hosts a celebrity tournament there every year. I think um, I know the course. I sent you a link to that, Mike. Remember a couple of months ago? Yes, it's I do. Beautiful. It's right. It's right on the water. Yeah, yeah, literally on the ocean. So you know that's a neat little gem. And then you know I had the good fortune of believe it or not last year, right after Women's Golf Day, I went to California because I try to go to different spots every year, and I played Pebble as a walk-on by myself. Oh wow. So that was kind of crazy, <laughs> like even for me, like it was kind of gutsy, but yeah. <laughs> I was, I am telling you in my life, I've never been so fearful. And I don't, it was like irrational fear, but I was like, I know this, I'm too many years in this. I'm either going to get a great group of guys or I could not get a great group of guys, you know, yeah. <laughs> so that I'm not going to be able to keep up or whatever, but it ended up working out really well. And then I guess I got felt so brazen that I, about a few days later, went down to because uh, I was traveling down the coast anyway, and I did the same thing at Tory, Tory Pines. Oh, it was like the last day before the open, so that was pretty cool. So I, that's like you know sometimes I'm like mm, my game's not even good enough to be playing those places, but I think it's good too because I think you know I got to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. Like so, women, we you know should and I was the only woman, only woman with uh, right. on both of those in and, both groups. <laughs> both groups and with far in sight the the other one the, the tory one i don't even know that i saw another woman my tea time was like some ridiculous I, I you wait in the parking lot like right. i got there yeah. at 4 30 in the morning we wow. walk in at 5 30 a.m and i had like a 6 10 the first hole was still dark when we were teeing off oh, wow well that's a, that's incredible that's like one of those definitely experience you talk about experiences that's like you know, I was like, oh, this is with the real deal. These are people, these are the real deal golfers. You know, this yeah. isn't the well, thanks fair for weather sure. Thanks for sharing that's those awesome. stories. That, the, that's pretty amazing. I mean, that's on my bucket list, both of, both of those golf courses. Pebble Beach, to be able to walk on is uh, unique in itself because usually it takes about a year to get a reservation. And it doesn't matter if it's snowing or hailing <laughs> or you've got to take your tea time. Um, so that's, that's pretty fascinating. Um, when well, you're one person, yes, somebody uh, so always drops out. That's true. That was yeah. it. I literally called like a day or two, and that otherwise I don't think I would have gotten on because I right. literally was, you know, like spelling in because it was, you know, missing. And so that's yeah. Maybe those are like little tricks of the trade. Maybe you don't. That isn't the experience you're looking for because obviously a lot of people. Yes, would it have been nice to do it with my dad or my dad and my mom. They're all mm -hmm. golfers or yeah. nephews or cousins or whoever. But. Um, that's just the way, you know, at some point, too, you just got to, like, take a shot, as they say. I don't know yeah. when I'll be back, and I don't know what's going to, you know, to, to set that up and how long. And I just say, you know, let's just go for it and do it. 
Yeah, it's a it's a bit of a crapshoot as who you're going to get paired up with, and uh, and and everything. And, and the fact that you did that just makes the story even better and the experience better. As much as you like to bring your your close foursome or your your good golf uh, gang, but uh, uh, you get to meet new people. And uh, when you go on as a single, anything can happen. I think you also you're going to focus more on the course because the thing is you're with your buddies or whatever you start chit chatting people that you can chit chat with any other time. Yeah. And I think I also took in the golf course a lot more as a result and was cognizant of trying to you know always trying to do my best, but even more so you're foc- focused on my game. Let's put it that way. Yeah. How is your game? What what kind of a cap do you carry? How many rounds do you play in a year? Your what's your home club? Oof. No, part, the Palm Beach part three is where I am. Oh, that's my I guess that's you your, that's your home, home club. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I did have, I think I still do, a membership at Waterville. I think I was one of the only women <laughs> or the only woman. So, uh, which I love that golf course. I'm in love with Lynx. If it was closer, trust me. Uh, I'll take that role all day long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, that goes into one of my, I didn't mention it, one of my favorite golf courses for sure. Um did you, get a, did you ever have a chance to go out and play uh, Seminole? Seminole Golf Club? It's a, uh, no. not too far but from guess you. what? I did go in the men's grow room, locker room. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> not what you're thinking, though. They have an event. How right do you know? That you, because I know what you're thinking. <laughs> 20, 23 years working in a male-dominated industry. I think I know what you're thinking. So um, they have that event every year after the Honda, mm. where a lot of celebrities play and, and tour players go and play at Seminole. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so there's a cocktail party, you know, because it's a, it's a pro-am, effectively. Or, mm-hmm. um, and so I was invited to the cocktail party. Oh, that's fantastic. Very cool. And, it, and it's held in there. Like it's a it's a massive room. I mean it's bigger than my apartment and my condo. Yeah. Their locker mm-hmm. room. So it's that's incredible. Pretty, yeah. Well if you're just And joined... I knew about it though. I knew about it from my book. Because mm. Andy okay. Rock and a couple of them. So in there I ask everybody in every single book, what's your favorite grow room? So it's very interesting to see what tour players say as well right. as celebrities as well as these guys. So Andy Roddick and a couple people, everybody kept saying seminal men's, oh, by far seminal. And I'm like, how am I ever going to get in there? So again, right. had a shot. Yeah, said, oh, yeah. We had uh, Gary Williams on here from the Golf Channel. He used to do the morning drive and he was talking about being a professional there and his experiences. He had some funny stories, climbing trees and whatnot <laughs> about Seminole and how Ben Hogan used to play and practice and get ready for the uh, Augusta National uh, Masters uh, every year. Um, If you're just joining us, we're talking to Alyssa Godet. She's Executive Golf International President, also founder of Women's Golf Day. Alyssa, tell us a little bit about your charity work. I know you work with Oceana. uh, Tell us about what that is and uh, why you got involved. Yeah, so that was, um, uh, you know, I used to live in New York City and I moved here into Florida in 2017. But I did a lot more work with them when I lived there and even had the president do a forward for our books. It's something I'm just passionate about, ocean conservation in the ocean. And um, so that was organic. I guess more more importantly, um, we have now with Women's Golf Day, we've tried as COVID happens to always, we always encourage every location to have a charity component if they can. They don't have to raise money. It could be pet adoption, whatever's important to that community, but we also have done the same. So we worked with Doctors Without Borders when COVID first happened. And because we have this giant network of locations, you know, we just asked for auction items. So hopefully that's, you know, no skin off anybody's back. And we did an auction. So we're doing one right now for the Ukraine Mm-hmm. That will end, um, I think it's June, right before our event, right before June 7th. But we have an online event, which I should definitely mention because anybody can go, men, women. It's really fun. It's called WGD Palooza, and it's meant to be like fun and exciting and fast moving. So it's videos and, and things like that and giveaways after each video, and they're short videos because you know everybody's kind of zoomed out. So yes. um, I love that. So, I love that uh, name. It's a great uh, name, WGD Palooza. I love yeah, because it. it's a palooza. It's a, it's, I had to explain to the people in Europe when we we're doing this, like a PR firm. We right. had, like, what's a palooza? I'm like, it's just a party. Yeah, it's a party, <laughs> fun little party, innocent. Um, 
so we do do that. And so as soon as that's over and we, we, we started doing it, but there's a lot of noise going on and we have a lot of attention. So we will um, bring that up, of course, and uh, drive it. But we've got like a round at Valderrama, another amazing place that I played wow. oh. in Spain. Um, and a lot of really cool golf experiences. So we encourage that. That's a great thing. That's our charity right now. So that we're working with. And we just, you know, every year get involved with something that, is uh makes sense for whatever we're doing you know we i actually had the ukrainian golf federation had a a a page on our um on our website because the locations have a page Mm -hmm. so yeah we reached out to them as soon as this started happening so um, and it's going to actually the ukrainian golf federation which their offices have been converted to um, SOS emergency center and they have yeah. two armored cars that they are using to deliver supplies. So, I mean, imagine you and I, we're like here working in the golf industry and the next day we're running an SOS emergency yeah. center. I couldn't imagine. Oh. No, it's, wow. So yeah, so we're, we're the money that we raise, you know, hopefully will be some, something that, you know, anything I think makes a difference, but we're giving it straight to them, to the Ukrainian golf federation. Well, this is great that you shared all this information, all these wonderful stories and things that you've been part of. Uh, Mike, your final thoughts? Um, Well, uh, for anyone who's listening, as you know, we're available on on YouTube. Uh, By tomorrow, uh, the show will be up on Spotify, um, Apple, and uh, everywhere you get your favorite podcast, Stitcher, uh, Anchor, you name it, we're there. Uh, we'll be sharing it through social media, and uh, please be sure to follow Alyssa's pages. Uh, we will tag uh, all of them when we post later. And um, yeah, no, again, Alyssa, thank you so much for uh, enlightening us on what you do and, and how you're growing the game for women. Yeah, yeah. I'll throw. Go. Uh, so I'm going to say I was going to throw one thing at you. Is what I, I, I've done with all of our uh, female guests is if you could add something to whether the LPGA tour or something that could help grow women's golf uh, um, on the professional level, what would it be? Engage more amateurs. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, you get a, the viewership. Yeah. But um, yeah, and we encourage, like, I hope everybody can find a location and come out on June 7th. You know, ladies, bring a friend. And then everybody's welcome online on um, May 31st, uh-huh. you know, yeah. womensgolfday.com. You'll find us there. The, all this stuff is there. And of course, everybody is welcome. You know, we don't, we don't discriminate. But, <laughs> well, so. it's, a, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thanks so much for your time. And, you know, for all of you who are watching or listening, make sure you look up Women's Golf Day. It's an important day. Uh, look up Executive Golf International. And uh, for Elise, Alyssa, Good day, Michael Bleakley. I'm Raphael Kalmat, and you've been listening to the Golf Podcast Live. Take care, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, listening. guys. I appreciate Thank it very you. much. Thanks, Elisa. Bye. Okay, and we're done. We usually there we go. We usually we give it a couple seconds for the lag to stop, and right. then, uh, and then even if the, our audience hears us talking and and signing off the, the way we are right now, that's okay. It gives them a feel for the show. I do.